What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. In today's video, we're gonna talk about how you can benefit from using the outliner when you're modeling in SketchUp. Let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so this is actually a question I got in one of our live calls in the SketchUp Essentials course. Um, side note, that is on sale through the end of the night tonight. So if you want more info about that, um, you can check it out at the SketchUpEssentials.com slash course. But basically the question was, why would I use the outliner? Remember, the outliner is a tool that you can find over in your tray or by opening the outliner window on a Mac. And it basically gives you a visual representation of all of the objects in your model. So for example, say I have these two cubes in a group. Notice how I can see that I have a group over here with two cubes. And I can actually click inside of the outliner in order to edit those different objects, um, as well as move the grouping around, other things like that. So it's a visual organization tool. So the first benefit of the outliner is the fact that it allows you to keep your model organized. So for example, this is a model I've created and I've grouped everything together. So I can see that my I have my roof in here, I've got landscaping, I've got all my windows. Um, those are all in different groups. And this allows me to see those groups. And first off, I can toggle them on and off, right? So I can turn my roof on and off, my interior walls, other things like that. And so this gives me a lot of control over visibilities in my model, as well as being able to edit individual things. So for example, let's say that I wanted to edit one of my doors. Well, what I can do is I can just come over here and I can find the door in my outliner list and just double click on it right here. So instead of having to do a whole bunch of like double clicking into groups, into groups, into groups, into groups, you can just directly go into something like that by clicking right here. In addition, all of these objects are grouped together in a way where I can find things quickly. So I don't have to go hunting through a giant list of things that just say group over and over again. So what I've done is I've grouped things by type and then I've labeled them so that I can see where everything is in my outliner. So just the organizational function is very valuable. And so one of the pluses of using the outliner is let's say that we've got a very conceptual high rise model like this one. I'm gonna to toggle these section planes off for a minute. So basically what we've got is we've got a bunch of different levels in here, right? Well, let's say that I wanted to come in here and edit one of these levels. Like let's say I wanted to edit level seven. Um, so right now what I would have to do to see which one is level seven is I would have to start counting, right? So assuming this is a basement, um, we do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right, So I can come in here and then click on this group, but that could get really time consuming if I'm doing that a lot. What we can do instead is because I've come in here and I've actually labeled each one of the levels in here, I can go in here and find level seven really quickly. So if I wanna edit level seven really quickly, I can just come over here and double click on level seven. This gets really powerful if you couple this with the uh, function in your model info under components to hide the rest of the model. And we actually want to fade similar components as well. So if I was to double click on this, so I can come in here and I can just edit level seven without having to do any kind of counting or anything like that. So making changes is really easy. Let's say I wanted to edit a different level. I can just double click on this and notice how it's allowing me to quickly pick out whatever level I want. So this isn't only valuable for high rises, but this is a great example of where being able to find something based on a label can make your editing a lot faster. So another thing that's really valuable is this gives you the ability to quickly toggle visibilities of things in your models. So let's say for example, that I wanted to work on this model a little bit. Well, right now there's a bunch of stuff in here, right? So we've got a bunch of furniture, we've got a bunch of uh, other things in here that I don't really need if I'm gonna work on the actual shell of the building. Well, because I'm able to see the groups in here of furniture, I can just toggle them off really quickly. So I can toggle my furniture off, I can to toggle my cabinets and my lights off, um, as well as things like my appliances really quickly, just based on the way that they're grouped. So this gives you control over visibilities in your model. Another thing that you might wanna do is let's say that you just wanted to work on your doors. Right, well what I can do is because this allows me to select multiple different groups at once, I can actually come in here and select all of these groups like this. So everything in my model that I don't want, I can click on the I function right here and I can hide them so that I can just edit my doors. So again, what this does is this gives me the ability to really precisely select and toggle visibilities on and off, which can be a massive time saver. And so another thing that's really powerful about this is let's say that I had a model like this one, which I've downloaded from the 3D warehouse, and I want to toggle the windows off. And so what I've got right now, and a lot of these 3D warehouse models don't necessarily come in grouped very well, but um, what I've done is I've grouped some of the windows together in a group that I've labeled 
windows. And I can toggle that on and off. But notice how there are some windows in here that aren't currently in that windows group. So you've got these right here and you've got these right here. Well, what the outliner allows you to do is instead of me having to come in here and like, you know, try to cut these out and then find my window group, right? Scrolling down, double click in here and then doing an edit paste in place, which allows me to put that in the group. If I was to undo this, well, then all I have to do in order to change their grouping is just drag them down and find that Windows group, which again, notice how this isn't 100% organized. Um, so that can take a little bit of time to scroll down, but I can just drop those in my Windows group right here. Well, notice how now they're off. So if you need to change the organization of your model, um, this is a really fast way to do that because you can just click and drag things into groups. And so the other cool thing about this is because I can see the names of the component definitions, let's say that I wanted all of these clear story windows to be in a group. Well, instead of having to come in here and find them and click on them inside of my model like this, what I can do instead is I can just do a shift click and make them a group from directly inside of the outliner. And then I could name this like window clear story, just like this. Well, now I have all of my clear story windows in a group right here. And I can do that for all of these different kinds of windows, which now gives me the ability to toggle those on and off from directly inside of the outliner. So another cool thing about the outliner is it also allows you to both group as well as edit section planes. So notice how for this building, for example, I've added section planes for the different levels like this, um, but it can still be kind of frustrating to have to come in here and do like an active cut for each one of these like this, um, because you have to toggle these section planes on so that you can see them in the viewport in order to change them, right? Otherwise, you can't really do this. Well, the cool thing about this is you can actually adjust and activate section planes just by right clicking on them and clicking on things like active cut inside of your outliner directly. So what that means is that means I can toggle section planes off and if I've set these up and labeled them correctly, I can turn them on without ever having to go turn on section planes inside of my viewport and then like find a section plane or anything like that. So note that inside of the outliner, you can also right click on section planes in order to edit their names. So let's say that we wanted this to actually say section level one like this, which is probably a better way to do this so that they're all kind of grouped together. But notice how I have complete control over the labeling of those section planes and symbols inside of the outliner. And so now these are easy to find and they're easy to switch between. You can actually double click on them in order to activate your different section planes from directly inside of the outliner. All right, and then finally, your grouping allows you to export reports and you can manage your grouping from inside of the outliner. And so by controlling our grouping inside of the outliner and using labels properly, we can actually run reports. So let's say I wanted a report of the doors in this model. I'm just gonna select my doors, do a file, generate report, and I actually have one set up that's going to give me the entity name, definition name, and quantity. And so if I click on run report, what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow me to actually export a schedule of objects right here, which I can then download to an Excel file or take over into layout, other things like that. So by controlling and setting up your grouping properly inside of the outliner, you can actually generate reports that you can use for plans in layout. All right, so I will link to another video about the outliner on this page. If you're interested in learning more about how to use SketchUp, make sure you check out my sale on the SketchUp Essentials course, which ends tonight. Um, I'll link to that on this page as well. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.